displayed either it's somewhere. Um, hello. All right. We should be live. I'm just going to wait for it to pop up, but this should be fun. Yay. We've got a lot of people waiting. It just always takes a minute. Happy Boxing Day, everybody. Merry Christmas, if you celebrate. <laughs> oh, here we go. We've got an ad playing, so that's, that's a good sign. <laughs> All right. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy late Hanukkah. Happy Boxing Day. Happy, happy, happy Boxing, boxing day. day. Happy Holidays, everybody. Hi. We should be live should be fun. We're here to talk about some books. Hello. Merry Christmas. How's everybody doing? Hope you've had a good, uh, good weekend. Merry Christmas. All right. So, um, yep. give it a minute. Hey, Heather. Hello. Merry Meowmas. <laughs> I love it. Happy holidays. I hope everyone's doing good. So yeah, so we're gonna, um, I, I couldn't find, like, I know it's here somewhere. I couldn't find my copy of Marvelous Light, but we're talking about Witch Mark and A Marvelous Light. Okay. I am so curious I to see how books. good he did. Yay. I couldn't, mm -hmm. I was like looking right before the live stream. I was like, where did I put it? I can't find it. I was I late, but I came prepared. <laughs> you did. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> awesome. Happy holidays. So... Hi everyone. How was uh how'd it go? How were the books? I'm so curious to hear what people thought. <laughs> Do we want to talk about first one and then the other or just like wild? Um maybe we could like do like Do you want to say why you picked both of these? Oh yeah, that's a good good thought. I mean, one very... of them is low key my fault, but <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, Kaz is true. here too. Um yeah. Oh Hello. Okay, we have somebody who liked both of them. Four stars each, probably. Awesome. Uh, okay, so they're very similar books. Originally, Witchmark is what we picked because it felt kind of holiday-ish. It's like Edwardian, magical version of Edwardian England with a like romance and uh, which I didn't know, and murder mystery, which I didn't know that part of it was in Witchmark. And then A Marvelous Light is the same thing. <laughs> by a different author so it was like two very similar books and uh thought it would be fun so yeah oh yeah all hardcovers are 50 percent off in store at barnes and noble today i saw that oh, nice. mm -hmm. and a bunch are on online but all everything on in, in sale am i the only one having hot cocoa store? i literally did this because i thought i had to really <laughs> Or did we say we were gonna do that? Did we say we were gonna have hot cocoa? The whole thing about how I was like, Leon is gonna have to like buy hot cocoa just for this because I was like, really? I don't, can I just have coffee instead? And you guys were like, there's that dark chocolate one that you like, and I was like, fine. And then they had I'm on sorry. sale. The I'm sorry, I was like, like we could, fine, I'll I, get it. I feel <laughs> so like I have the polar opposite because I have an orange soda. <laughs> I I'm still cool. trying to unclump this thing. Yeah, I, mean, I have I, like I have hot cocoa. If you want me to pause to go make it real quick, it's fine. I'm just, really sorry. I totally enjoy the fuck out of this. I totally forgot, totally forgot too. I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah, enjoy your hot cocoa, but do it. I I just opened it for the first time heart. today, so I and I did. Well, measure. hopefully it's hopefully it's good. <laughs> yeah. I totally lumpy. forgot about that. So sorry. I'm sorry, Lena. <laughs> It, oh, okay. no. oh no one of my favorite books of the year and one of a five star and a one star wow but which oh. is oh, which wow. i know it's Interesting. intriguing i definitely okay. liked one more than the other even though they got similar ratings I have, i've too. been thinking about it more and more yeah the more what the order did we all read them in i read uh, which mark first i did too. and then i read a marvelous light Same. backwards i did mine marvelous then i did which mark yeah, I did yeah. Marvelous first because I read it like two months ago. So. Well, yeah, I'm Bethany's case. So, yeah. Um, well, what, okay, I want, I'm curious to hear, like, just maybe we could just use star ratings and then we could do more in-depth, like, discussions of... I think the comparison is interesting for these two, though. I remember what star ratings I get. I think I remember, but I don't want to tell yeah. a lie. They are extremely similar books. They are. Um, but I, I felt like A Marvelous Light was markedly better. I read, oh, Anna disagrees. I read I this agree. first and this second. <laughs> and I gave this three and a half originally, but having read this, I would probably now give this three and give this four. 
Mara, are we best friends right now? Sorry, we we often have very similar opinions. I feel like on this book club. What? Is, so, Amanda, do you agree? Was that your exactly writings? exactly okay. that? They they right like I I liked Marvelous Light. It was fine. I was like, it's not the best, but it, I had a good time with it. It has it has potential. And then I read this one, and I'm like, I forgot who a lot of people were. I was kind of bored just because like it didn't hook me. And I gave it like three and a half, so I put four stars for both. But I'm like, no, nah, this is a three. It's a three. I, I haven't re- changed it, but I'm like, yeah, Mara, me and you, we're, we're yeah. book twins <laughs> in this club. So, Leanna, what was your opinion? Because apparently you disagree with me and Amanda. I mean, I didn't like either very much, but I gave this three and this two. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. The one that oh, I kind of like forced on us to do, I gave a lower rating. Wow. Okay, so I liked oh, both I of really them. Th- I really thought that you were at least going to like this and that we were yeah. going to have one book finally that we all at least liked. Oh, I was I, hopeful. I, I mean, three three stars is I liked it, you know, a good Yeah. yeah. Like, so, okay, which mark like we two all... two and a half rounded to a three. Like, I was like... Okay. That's so interesting. Okay, so okay. I really liked both of them. Marvelous Light I did, like, better, actually. I think I gave it, like, a four and a half. And which mark was a four. Um, which mark like took me a little bit longer to get into, but once I was into it, I really loved it and I liked the ending and I want to read on in the series. So it, there's three in their series? I think three, yeah. In the which mark? Which mark, yeah. yeah. I don't think I would continue I don't think I'd actually continue in either of these because I think that this is a series as well. <laughs> Your yeah. face. I just had a big clump. Okay. Oh. Like, no, I did not get all the clumps. That was a just giant clump right there. Elena, in a second, I'm going to turn my camera off and go heat up some <laughs> some oats so awful. that I can have, so I can join you. This is so um, funny. Um, yeah, I don't think I would continue in either series, but I did okay. like a marvelous light quite a bit. It was smuddier mm-hmm. than Witchmark. Like, it was. Yes, which I did. Yeah. Which, which mark I thought <laughs> yeah I think which mark was it was like conceptually really interesting to me because I think it was which we can talk about but like I think it was trying more to grapple with the impact of empire and colonization which I thought was interesting which okay so you want to <laughs> know why I feel the way I feel so I read which mark like either in between reading the duology or right after reading finishing the duology of the declaration of the rights of magicians and that is like entirely that project of like the enlightenment era but retold mm-hmm. with magic questions of abolition reframed with magic questions of human mm-hmm. rights reframed with magic and like there's like it's not a male male romance but there's like a, a bromance like a friendship between um wilberforce and william pitt and like i was like that was like so good and then this one just felt like a clumsy half-assed like bargain basement version of that i was like oh you yeah. kind of tried to do some like themes of rights with magic but like I just saw it done like the way you're supposed to do it. And this was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> See, whereas I was really bored with yeah. the book you're talking, which is why I sent them to you because I thought you would like them better than I did. I was like, I don't, I didn't like well, them. So. <laughs> it's just, I don't fully understand which mark still, mainly because it I was bored most of the time. So my brain just wandered and I was like, so like they do the weather and then they use souls to make yes their you make the weather good <laughs> like, I, I would say like, my critique of both of these books is I don't think that the magic system was explained no very well and yeah. I, I don't need it to be like thoroughly explicated and I don't need to have it info dumped necessarily but like if you're not going to info dump you need to like successfully via showing explain what the magic is and I felt like neither of them were awesome at that but I particularly felt like that I I don't know if which mark was a debut but it felt like a debut to me I think it was I I think they're both debuts actually okay yeah so maybe that's why both of them are maybe not the best but in which mark I really felt it and because of that I in retrospect especially Mm -hmm. I'm like yeah there were parts of it where I was also bored because I was just like I feel like I don't understand fully or well enough what's going on. But so mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like I I I feel kind of similar, but uh, but my result like reaction is the opposite because like I feel like again neither magic system was well explained. But I felt like Witchmark didn't also spend that much just time on it. You know, they're like here's the magic and like like the fact of the magic is important to what's going on in the plot, but we didn't have on page a lot of dealing with it. 
And so like in Marvelous Light, it was also confusing, but a lot of page time was spent still dealing with it. But I still was like, what? <laughs> so I was just like, none of this mm. makes any kind of sense. And it's taking up a ton of space here. <laughs> Interesting. I think maybe because I felt like I, I at least, I felt like I understood a Marvelous Light's magic enough to understand the plot. So maybe yeah. I just didn't get, and because I tend to be less like into like world building, it doesn't bother like, me as much as long as I feel like I like understand what's cradle. going on. But it seems yeah. like cat's the cradle. magic and marvelous light <laughs> kept being so many things. Like every every page, there was like it can also do this, and also yeah. this, oh, and I mean also this, and then also this, and you're like, so what are the rules? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I didn't are, mind are, so much because I guess that's that's interesting because I think a marvelous light I liked for the romance. Like I read it more as a romance, whereas Mitch, whereas Witchmark, I was more interested in the ideas of the book. If that makes sense, this yeah. one I liked. I liked as a Grump Sunshine romance quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, and I'm a sucker for that. So like, I was kind of in the tank for it. And I actually, I do feel like there is some discussion here about, um, I don't know, like queerness as yeah, um, uh, like magic. And different kinds of magic as like metaphors for queerness and then mm -hmm. like there's the you know queer romance so like i felt like this had some layers to it but i agree now that you're saying that bethany i agree i think i read this more as like speculative romance mm -hmm. rather than as a fantasy and i think if yeah. i was reading it primarily as a fantasy maybe i wouldn't have liked it as much yeah i would agree i think i did read it whereas witch mark i didn't like i I didn't care that much about the romance in Witchmark. No, I was much I cared more zero like, percent about the romance. In yeah, Witchmark. same. I I, I was interested in about the romance in both books. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. I was much. I think with Witchmark, I was much more interested in the like family dynamics, like the brother sister thing, and like the relationship. But like that part of it was what. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got so upset with that. <laughs> the whole thing. It's is. just like. He's like, okay, so you don't want to have, like, this slavery situation? Are you going to free me? And she goes, no, because I need to keep you as my slave so I can free other people. The hypocrisy yes. is never, like, touched upon. <laughs> it's just like... Well, I feel like it will probably well, in further books, like, yeah. later books be, like, con yeah. continue to be a source of conflict. Yeah. Like, how does she not see it and it bothered me because she's supposed to be, like, this, yeah. like, visionary, I'm saving the world by doing the thing that I'm trying to stop people from doing. And well, like, which bothered but, me but i, I get that that's the, the thing it's the point <laughs> but like it drove me crazy to the point where i just like i stopped listening i was it was audiobook so i stopped listening at points and i'm like oh fuck what's happening and i had to like remember that they're actually i'm reading a book right now <laughs> i really <laughs> like the wander. narrator for the witch yeah. mark audiobook because he's the same narrator yeah. as empire yeah. of silence which he was good uh, oh yeah, just, interesting yeah i, think, I just I like i think empire of silence is way better <laughs> I guess I thought it felt like it was kind of interesting because because I feel I guess I feel like Witchmark is a lot think trying to think about the stuff of like colonization and war and stuff and from that perspective I think it's so interesting these people who like do really wrong things and think they're saving people in the process because that is such a thing like with yeah. a lot of you know I like, agree but like I don't think it was done well enough for me to like like it <laughs> yeah that's why i said like i was reading it i was like i see what you're attempting to do here and like i guess like a for the i like the wanting to do that i guess is what i mean mm -hmm. i just i was like but this wasn't very good <laughs> like like i i see what like the direction you're trying to head and like i approve of the choice to want to go in that direction but like it wasn't very good. yeah like i i also didn't really get into the romance either because it was kind of why are they together? <laughs> like, I didn't get the attraction necessarily. Well, I felt the same way about the, the Marvelous Light, where I was like, I don't oh, get why you guys, like, I, uh, I didn't like, think they were interesting uh, as people individually, and I didn't feel chemistry <laughs> between them, and, and then the magic made no kind of sense, and then there wasn't any kind of, like, larger statement trying to be made either, and I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> oh see i i definitely it's bought and maybe sunshine. it's because i am a romance yeah. reader yeah i definitely saw the trope happening that i was like exactly oh yeah, yeah. like okay yeah we got our I sunshine do they have yeah. chemistry yeah. issues though yeah i don't think like i think it's just like oh we're the only two gay people around now we're in love it, it was yeah. a little like that no there's there's but, what's his face who's oh, also gay he doesn't count yeah I don't know. I really, I really like the liked Duke? their relationship. The like, and I thought it was just really, I don't know. I really liked the romance in A Marvelous Light a lot. 
I did by the end, but like yeah. I do see there's are there are there is an argument to be made about the chemistry lacking yeah. a bit. But I, I do like really a grump honest. sunshine. I, so. Yeah, I like a grump sunshine so much that like I kind yeah. of exactly. if it wasn't a trope I, mean, I, I liked too. as much, I probably would have given this like a three and a half, but I just really like that trope. So I, it too. I feel like they were Agreed. just such boring individuals and maybe they deserve each other because like I don't know why anyone need love too. Did any of them? I like. I liked them. (laughs) I feel like. Well, Marvelous Light had. I wish it went further with like the humor it had because it has a lot of silly things. Like a hedge tried to eat them. Like it's it's silly at times, and I wish they would have leaned into it more. Because then you could have had like a comedy of errors plus magic plus a queer romance, and I think it would have enhanced the story a bit. But well, I mean, uh, so like honestly, based on that. like how it was pitched, what I had hoped for was I don't I have I mean I know we talked about how it was pitched, just like Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell meets like Red White and Royal Blue. But have you guys read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell? No, I've read Red White and Royal Blue. Same. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't know if Mara's read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, but I, like I've it. seen I've seen the the miniseries. The miniseries is pretty faithful. Uh, I would say you have a pretty good impression of what it's I, like. Own um, the book, if you've seen it. but I have not read it or seen it. <laughs> but so, like, I mean, it's basically retelling. Uh, it's an alternate history, right? Where like in the Napoleonic War era, but with like, you know, magicians, and but it's it's mute, magic hasn't like really. Like the entire history of England is different, right? But like magic doesn't really exist anymore. But people like magicians are people who like study like what once was magic, but we don't really have it anymore. And people kind of still think like if you were to say magic, they'd be like, well, that's not possible because like that's from back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. then like we have Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell who are like hair like foretold as like the return of magic. And like the way that they do magic is like really different. And they have it's kind of grump sunshine also, but Jonathan Strange is like Oh, I could just like do a magic thing. And Mr. Norrell's like, no, you have to study it and you have to be careful. And this is craziness and you can't do that. And like they hate each other because like they're wildly different approaches, but it's not a romance. And so like I was really hoping. (laughs) Yes. I was really hoping that when this was pitched, you know, as Jonathan Trange and Mr. Jonathan Trange and Mr. Norrell, but like now as a as a romance, I could already envision like the way that Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell is as a story, where like you would kind of like tweak it and make them look like hotter and like more romantic because they kind of already have that vibe in how they approach magic. And it is a historical England, but with magic. And I was like, that could work because there's already like this tension between them. It's just non-romantic in the book. And I was like, I could see that being like a good romance if you like so you you probably had a very specific idea of what this was going to be whereas when they said jonathan strange and mr norrell like when i read that i was like oh okay so it's a historical fantasy yeah that's i'm not (laughs) i mean like yeah it's and, and red white and royal blue because it's gay like i think that's the equivalent of what they mean is just that it's a gay historical well, fantasy. well i came to realize that yeah. politics. With the politics with some politics yeah. i mean that's like you know yeah i don't I know i just marvelous light was just like rompier mm-hmm. and i think that tone for the story worked for me yeah. versus which mark was a little more self-serious which isn't a bad thing i just think that especially reading them back to back for me, I realized, like, I just like this more lighthearted and fun. And yeah. I don't know. Which mark? I did I did really appreciate, like, I a like lot of the that. metaphorical layers mm-hmm. to what C.L. Polk was attempting. Yeah. Um, I just don't know that it fully, like, all came together. Yeah. So I mean, it, I, like, A for yeah. effort kind of a thing. Yeah, that's Especially what I was saying. I was like, do. I think I vastly approve of, like, the direction that was attempted i was like i see what what, what your intention with this was so like right. i like that intention but i just don't think you did a very good job i think that's i mean i think that's fair i didn't like i mean i gave it four stars so it wasn't like i was thought it was perfect but i did like it and i liked what it was trying to do this eric this is how i feel too i also liked this the eric irreconcilable difference in interests between family members who still love each other and that tension of like like the moment, like cause there was that moment in the book where he almost kills his sister, but then pulls back because he's like, I want to be free, but this is too much of a, of a price to pay. Like things like that. Like I thought, like, I don't know, hit for me. Like I, I wasn't that. into the romance again in either book, but I did feel like uh, romance aside that in Witchmark, there were sort of, you know, I felt there was a realness to the characters and to the situations and to the emotions they were dealing with where I could like kind of like latch onto that and be like, 
like I still don't think this is like an excellent book, but like I kind of see what you're getting at and I kind of get the kind of feelings you're talking about and like what they'd be going through. And there was like there was some like a little bit of meat to it there with that. But with Marvelous Light, I was just like, what was the point of any of this? Like and then Marvelous fun. Light. There were multiple Jesus. instances in Marvelous Light where the prose was like actively bad. And I was like, that's not that co- no, that's not correct. What no, no. I guess I didn't notice if that that may, I don't know. It didn't stand out to me that that was the case, but I felt like which mark I will agree the most realistic or like real relationship that I found in the book was between the brother and the sister. Like that Yeah. That yeah, felt I agree. the most fully realized and the most authentic. um the romance was more like a catalyst for conflict between them yes that's a good point i agree and i mean like was i happy at the end of that like how the romance stuff like sure i mean i'm a sap i'm i go for i mean me and leanna were talking about this this morning because we were we just buddy read the mad ship so we were i'm trying to not and I was get trying your to, heart broken like stop I hoping know, for I know, i'm trying end. to like i'm i'm shipping some things in in that world that i know are not going to end well but anyway all that being said i'm a sap at heart and anytime two crazy kids are going to make something work together in this world like i'm probably going to be pretty happy about it so i was happy about that but i don't know that i really like believed it yeah yeah also this is That's very fair. good hot cocoa leanna i'm glad that you oh, reminded good. me we were going to do this I, oh, yeah, God, yours is good. That. Mine is just very lumpy. Okay, so this is interesting that that pitch is in the U.S., whereas U.K. and Australia is thrown on Georgia Hare, Julia Quinn, and Downton Abbey. That sounds more for a marvelous light. Yeah, I can see the Georgia at higher in terms of like the rompy tone. Yeah, and the Downton not- Abbey kinda, but it's got magic, so I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty yeah. sure now that I've read it, the only reason they threw Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell at it, it was because there's magic in it. But well, there's magic. It's like, I mean, it's like it. the time period and the magic. Yeah, I mean, I don't yeah. think it's like... Which is usually the case. Like, I usually don't take those kinds of, re- like things seriously literally. like like yeah. literally like usually when they say it's like this meets this it's like these it's like very big picture not like you know specific yeah. yeah i don't know if i'm just looking at both of these as romances because like that's been my december where i'm just like i just want to read fun rom-coms i just want to have like fun books in my life and if i'm looking at both of these like romantically I feel like the romance in A Marvelous Light is better developed. Yeah. But it's more of a focal point. Yeah. True. But like, Witchmark is just, it's kind of there. Like, if I was reading this as just a romance with not the magic aspect, well, I mean, it could be like a paranormal romance, whatever. But it's just like, I'm like, wait, why does he like him? (laughs) He is like a thousand years old. And he is a doctor, period. <laughs> like, that's all it, he's, he's, he's a veteran. He's into doctors. It's he just likes thing. doctors. But like, he's also like um, wet cardboard of <laughs> a person. <laughs> like, he doesn't have a lot of like pizzazz about him. And I'm like, this guy has been around for a while. I don't see someone who's been around that long being real into someone who doesn't have some pizzazz because like it would be have you heard of bella swan you know what <laughs> have you met edward have you met edward he's equally as shitty <laughs> anyway okay like, I, I give up this just talk yeah. about what you want then. i mean i feel <laughs> yeah yeah, no, no I, I mean, I sort of, I, I mean, I, yeah, Amanda. yeah, I mean, I didn't love the romance part of it. I think maybe she was trying for the sort of like, you know, I, I don't know, like more exciting person with the more chill person. Like, I think maybe that's what she was going for with that dynamic, yeah. like when you have like kind of opposites. But I, yeah, I mean, like, I didn't love the romance. It was whatever. It was fine. I like I liked other stuff about that one. I feel um, like with the, the marketing of it, though, like, I did, I mean, I wouldn't have wanted to, for it to be straight plagiarizing Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. I mean, then I'd also be like, uh, I mean, you can't do that. But, like, I feel like by making that comparison and by not selling it and marketing it as a romance, you know, like the, the I think the imprint, you know, it's Tor.com. It's, I don't know if they yeah. do, like, straight romances. 
Not really. But I feel like it made me think going into it that while there would be a strong romantic current, as indicated by the comparison to Red, White, and Royal Blue, that this would ultimately be like a book about more than that. That like this is a book about like a story and magic and that there would be a romance in it. And that like, and as opposed to it being like just straight rom com where there's like much a rom-com. some wibbly wobbly magic in there also that makes no kind of sense. And I was like, Which, like, I would never have picked this up. <laughs> okay. Well, but that is also exactly what I said it was. Yeah. <laughs> like based on the like how it's marketed. Well, it's I not... don't think it's incorrect to say that this is yeah. a romance in a speculative world yeah. with a mystery plot, which yeah. is what we that's what, that's what I was I was sold. So that's what that's I got. What I, and I, I mean happy. that's what I said it was. And I, I mean that's you know. And I just I don't know. I mean, I just like two crazy kids making it work. The magic <laughs> made enough sense to me that the plot worked for me. There were bad guys who were bad. You know, there was some pound town that was pounding. You know, I mean, I, feel I like liked the use of I liked the use of magic and the 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 sexy times. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was infuriated like... by the like the attempt at making it like a contractual type of magic, and my mind was just like, "This, where are the boundaries? How much of the land is it? Every grain of the land that is involved in this contract, or does the does the earth, does the dirt know that there is a border around this? Is everything that's in the dirt part of this?" What is, does it matter? Like the composition of the dirt? Who is actually agreeing to this? Like, like all of the parts of that, I was just like, you should have made this a way more amorphous magic system. And then I would have been like, okay, it's wibbly wobbly. But you were like, all of this like detail about the like contracting of it. And I was like, that makes no f-ing sense. I was like, I cannot yeah, I was it. just excited because it reminded me of um, the Innkeeper oh. series from Ilona Andrews, which I really enjoy. And that whole bit with the house just made me think of that. So I was just happy. I was just happy to be reminded of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm a simple, I'm a simple lass. I liked it too. I, yeah. I mean. Lena didn't like a romance. I'm shocked. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. I mean, the one you do, the ones she does like are, are, are unicorns. So, you know. Yeah. Well, European I, land uh, ownership. Don't question it. I mean, <laughs> look. <laughs> So funny. But I'm glad that idea. like everyone else had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so interesting to me because to me, yeah, I mean, I guess it just boils down to like, yeah, it was basically a romance. And if you yeah. aren't into that, you're not going to like it. But to me, I guess as somebody who likes both genres pretty well, like this was so decidedly a better version of what it was trying to be than this was, in my opinion. Um, which if is so like, funny if you read it as trying some... to be a romance, then yes. But it, I didn't feel like Witchmark wanted to be well, a straight romance. See, well, no, like, I don't I think thought... that Witchmark did, and that's why no. I think it wasn't as successful. Like, I think yeah. this was really going for more of like truly leaning into the fantasy and yeah. like the macro plot stuff more. And I don't know that it was like wholly successful in that. So, like mm-hmm. to me, this wasn't as good of a version of whatever it was trying to be. Well. As this it's, was it reminds me of there was, was that what was it the bright and something seashore whatever there was that book that like last year I think we both read oh uh, yeah bright, bright and burning bright and marvel marvelous Chloe Neal See, yeah that well, one like yeah. I, I got an arc of that and I was bright like and well and this sea. was too much romance to be uh, like a fantasy and too much fantasy to be a romance and I just felt like both ended up taking too much away from each other to be fully satisfying in either capacity so I feel yeah. like which mark is kind of landing there as well where it's like it's too romancy to be fantasy too fantasy huh. to be romance like not really succeeding at either enough to like but those, satisfy I, anyone that's interesting i agree that it's the similar project but i like that project like i like I that too. bright and burning sea book like, like i'm cool with a book that's trying to be about equally both but um but i feel like then it has to that like, it was satisfy on a... both levels and sometimes like it'll be like right like, in both because it like yeah <laughs> but this to me wasn't hitting both notes enough for me to just love it like I think this was I I feel like I'm coming off more negative on this book than I was like this was fine that's why I would land at a three at this point like it's a B it was fine I just Mm -hmm. don't think it was like a great version of what it was trying to be that's kind of how I felt about it I just thought it was better than (laughs) I feel like we feel the same about which mark I just you put marvelous here and I put it here yeah we're the same on which mark I mean, and I feel like I'm kind of maybe like slightly more positive on Witchmark, but not like dramatically. Like I don't, you yeah. know, like pretty similar. I just really liked Marvelous Light for the romance part. So yeah. 
Yeah. But I think they're really different books. But then um, you and Amanda both liked Red, White, and Ro- Royal Blue way more than I did. Yeah, so, I liked it. Oh, yeah. You weren't here um, when I was asking if anyone here has read Jonathan Strange or Mr. Norrell. So I haven't read it. Okay, so nobody. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> I, I shook my head. I had my earbuds in, so I heard you ask that, and I shook my head no. But I was picking my cocoa, so you could see <laughs> So it. we couldn't see it. <laughs> I felt a disturbance in the air in the negative variety. <laughs> Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's no, funny. well, ours too short says making my friend who hates romance books read romance once a month video idea for Leanna and one of you guys. That's basically what this is. Yeah, we already are doing that. So <laughs> was... yonder years, so Leanna and I were out at a restaurant. I was like, Leanna, I got this idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to trick her into reading Tessa Dare. And Which, I was like, I'll like, read Joe Abercrombie. Which was successful. <laughs> That's the start of the Blades and Bodice first book club back in the day. I love yeah. it. Uh, yeah, it was funny. I was doing my worst books of the year and I was like, most of the like my worst, worst ones were both picks from Leanna. And I said, but that's only fair because we torture her almost every month <laughs> with a book she does not enjoy. So a bunch of my worst is we're also <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> about fair play yeah, yeah. i just th- what i think yeah like my worst books of the year list and i was like you know what i started making the list and i think two of them from book club are on my worst books list one of know. them is and it's one that i picked <laughs> wait which one <laughs> oh the widow of rose house it's on my most disappointing oh, yeah. list that yeah. was not fun. But that one I don't yeah. have a rage boner for. I, I, I'm, no, sorry. No, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I low-key until one. right the second forgot that we read that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I Year one is on my worst list. I'm sorry, Mara. Yeah, but it's you, like, I, you everyone knows I hated it the most of all of us. Like, I yeah. really hated it so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I could. T- I knew you hated that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, like, cause the thing is for me is like, I'm not doing like a worst books of the year. I'm doing most disappointing. So like, even most though there are, yeah, well, yeah. So like there, there, yeah, like least there least are favorite. a couple of, like, there's a couple other book club books that I didn't rate very high, but they're not on that list because I didn't go in with high expectations necessarily, you know? Yeah. So I think that's the thing. Whereas, whereas Widow, yeah. Like. Whereas Widow of Rose House, like I went in expecting to love it and then was like, I don't like this. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. I do think well, it's interesting to me play. these are two books that really do j- rightly have the same pitch for them. Yeah. But they are pretty, They're like, pretty a different, different tone. And I don't know. I, it just, it's an, it's an interesting exercise to me in like the same it elevator is. pitch for two books that both deserve that pick, pitch, but are pretty different. So, yeah. I think that's kind of interesting. This is an interesting question. What is the high? What was the highest rate of Blades and Battle Strippers book club pick for all of you? I think like for this, this year, because I was, I think Southern Book Club's guy last year. Last year, yeah, that's the only one we all liked. All but like, like, like what? What it ones? I hate to burst everyone's bubble. Like, I liked it. I did not love that book. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Everyone's like, we love it. I'm like, I didn't love it. I think I was clear. I was well, like, I at least, liked it. I'm trying to but it was yeah, the only one where we all at least liked, liked it. We all at least liked it, though. Yeah. Which doesn't. Um, um, I mean, the one that I picked because I really like it was Sword of Summer. So that would be my favorite. But yeah. um, I'm trying to think if there were others that I'm were like, that I'm I... like, like, I'm looking at my Goodreads shelf for it. I like, mean, what honestly, you... this is Marvel Slide is probably my runner up. For book club yeah. this year, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, what What did we read? We read Black Company, which no, that sorry, yeah, that was on my uh, list. I uh, oh, I liked um, Goblin Emperor. Oh yeah, I liked that one pretty well. I liked it. Didn't and it, but I liked it. like I liked Shadow and Claw. Like I didn't love it, but I enough that I read. We that read was on the my worst list. Yeah. Uh, I'm shocked. From Blood and Ash, <laughs> I've I've become more disappointed oh, yeah. with as time has gone on because I, forgot. I get yeah. mad when I realize it won the best romance category of its year. Like that makes me <sighs> mad. But it like it's it in and of itself is like a three star book, two and a half, three star book, but like in the context of it winning best romance, it makes me mad. 
Yeah, what did we? But read? I had a pretty good time reading it. Like I ha- I can tell you. Okay, we read we read year, we, we read year one. I like that one. <laughs> I think I'm the only one that liked it, but that's because yeah, I went in with very low expectations. <laughs> I'm looking over these and I'm like, we didn't really hit the ball out of the park on most of these. No. Uh, we we did, tried well, though. We tried real hard. Um, which mar- that so this, mar- this month obviously was Witch Mark and Marvelous Light, um, which I like Marvelous Light, but I had read it before. Uh, we did Heart of Blood and Ashes. Oh yeah, which- Bloody Handy. Oh yeah, which I like. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't I'm think like any... A- yeah, I don't think yeah. anyone else liked that. Right. We did Widow of Rose House. Which no, I think I liked the best, but yeah. I did love. I we did The series. Unbroken, which I liked. I liked it. Yeah. it fairly well. It was fine. Yeah, like I liked it, but I didn't like love it. From Blood and Ash, which I liked. I, I, Mara, I feel similarly to you, I think, where like I really enjoyed it when I was reading a bit, but like I don't want to continue with the series from what I've heard. And like I hate that it won. Yeah. Also. Yeah, I picked it because it did win. So I was like, oh, well, if it won. Yeah. And, and then we're like, oh, what happened? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we did Black Company, which I liked the idea. <laughs> I liked but... better than Shadow and Claw. High praise. Indeed. I did not like it better than Shadow. <laughs> I like Shadow and Claw sure. definitely better. I can't uh, pick one or the other. They're both dumpster fires to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, deal with the devil. Oh, yeah. That was just meh. Three and a half. That's fine. That's and the okay. last final girl. Eh. And everyone's like, eh, about it. I like that of. one the best, but even I, I wouldn't I say it's like know. amazing. We did not do well this year. Uh, Goblin Emperor. <laughs> yeah. Like, like now it. that we're saying this, I would say my favorite was my one that I picked, but I know that both and Lee sort and of I summer. Yeah. didn't like that one. Sort of summer. Uh, yeah. I would say this is probably number two, and year one was probably number three. I would yeah. say the, the only two that I really like liked a lot was would be for me would be marvelous light and goblin emperor i thought you were there like maybe, maybe which mark i liked unbroken but not like I, like yeah. i had to pick a favorite i guess that's that's gonna be my favorite it was unbroken okay yeah I but i one. do feel like several <laughs> of them like push me out of my comfort zone a little bit yeah. or something that i wouldn't have picked up but like that's true you know mm. I, even though i did not enjoy the black company or shadow and claw i'm not mad that i have read them yeah you know like and yeah. I kind of got to find out what the hype was about with From Blood and Ash. Mm-hmm. So that was okay. Unbroken, I know, was a big one. I don't know. Like, mo- there's very few of them that I'm like, meh. Like, a lot of them were at least worth trying. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Did you know? I love Gaudy Knight. Um, I used to think that Dorothy Sayers was one of my all-time favorite authors until I attempted to read the Whimsy series this year <laughs> as a 34-year-old and realized that I no longer like them, but um yeah it's interesting yeah. thankfully we all have hob <laughs> yes that's true ptl for hob hey jocelyn um hey. Yeah, yes the writing, the writing is, very, is different. very different that's true and i would say i tend to prefer the writing in which mark the style of the prose but see that's i fair. like something that's i don't know it is interesting because i think just that's just a difference in our taste because i like things that have sort of a lightness of t- touch in the writing which i don't I, mean, I think is a harder sell for you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> i mean you may <laughs> we're reading all the abercrombie first law books anyway next year leah you can read them twice <laughs> <laughs> Reread Blade itself again. Well, in like actually, summer. Leanna's pick. I'm. I've got pretty high hopes that this is going to be one. This is our jam. I really, really, like it. I really <laughs> wanted to read this, so I'm actually decently thinking that maybe all of us are going to like this one. I it hope it's so. very long. It's very long. long. It's 658 I I pages. I think I got the really? audio book. Um, the audio book. It's on it is a standalone, which I like, and it is a standalone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, that's great, actually. Also, I, didn't know I mean, the, the text is pretty big on these pages. Like, it's long, but I'm not going to say it's, like, super short, but it's not Yeah. as long as it looks, you know? Oh, yeah. I got it. I think it, I got it on sale on Chirp one time because it was, like, four bucks. Yeah. The audio. So I've got, I've got um, decently high hopes that this is going to be one we all like. I oh, it's so. on Scribd? That's good to oh, know. Oh, cool. That's great. It's, it's on my Scribd because Scribd is different for everybody. Yeah. They throttle, they throttle your books and pretend they don't. I know they do. Anyway, <laughs> red sticks of the books. And, 
Okay, this is interesting. So when you said they had read six of the book picks and had readings from one to five. So yeah, we had like a wide range. <laughs> I'm trying uh, to think. So the one that all of us did not like was The Black Company. Is that our, is that the one book that we all had the same opinion on? Yeah. I yeah. think every other one, there were people who liked it and people who didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So None of I us really like middle, liked middle, it. Middle I liked it the house. best. Middle and middle I, house, I think we were pretty... I think Meh. we all kind of I liked agreed. that one. Okay. Laura liked it okay. No, yeah. Black Company, I liked the best and I gave it two and a half. So I gave it yeah. one and a half. Yeah, I, yeah. Think I, I forget what two. I gave it, but it's a dumpster fire. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, no dumpster fire rating system. It's true. <laughs> okay, so somebody said Goblin Emperor, Unbroken, and Marvelous Light were their favorites. Uh, <laughs> um, excited for Guns of the. Cool. Yeah, I'm fun. excited for Guns of the Dawn. I'm 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 holding out hope that's going to be the one that we. <laughs> well, like. so like I mean, we have been talking now about how which Mark attempts, you know, to have to straddle two worlds, as did the bright and breaking whatever Chloe Neal book, and like Guns of the Dawn, I think successfully straddles multiple worlds. Like you have okay. like family dynamics, romance dynamics, politics, war, battle, magic, like pretty much every like. I mean, if you want an entire 600 pages that's only romance, you will not be mm -hmm. satisfied. If you want an entire 600 pages that's only war, you will not be satisfied. But, like, it has all of the things in it. <laughs> okay. Do okay. people go to Pound Town or? No. <laughs> it doesn't have all of the things. But there's <laughs> tension. <laughs> Romantic tension. Right. So it's like, like and someone was asking, it's 650 pages. So yeah. Yeah. That's good size type. I'm guessing yeah. that if it was like small type, it'd be around 400 pages. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited for this. Like if this was one of those paperbacks that's like not small, that was like. You know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it'll be fun. I'm excited to, excited well, to try it. And because we're going to quarterly next year, I think that we have the chance to like really like make our pick count, you know? No pressure. It's true. <laughs> Jane Austen goes to war. It is a bit, yeah. That's kind of what Sounds, I mean, is about. It's like if Lizzie Bennett was like, time to go to war. <laughs> all right. I'm not mad about it. Um, are we still doing, I think, Highwayman in April? Is that? I think no? she's, not, she's not picked yet. So we have okay, not cool. picked yet. Okay. I, cool. I, I like doing it every month, so I, I have to think hard about okay. what I want to do for my quarter. <laughs> All right. Because <laughs> uh, there's only, I only get one shot at it, so yeah. I got to think. Like Eminem, you only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow this opportunity. Or like once. Hamilton. Lifetime. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm not throwing away your shot. Oh, man. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's so we'll, got it. we'll have to figure out, like, what what all we're doing i i don't know what i'm gonna do either so i don't either i've got to think about it yeah i mean y'all have time it's not even 2022 we do. yet <laughs> almost we're close almost. i think Le yeah. i think uh bethany gets to pick the halloween book this year yes so i'll have to figure out um okay i actually i do have a thought there is something that i've been like wanting to read for a long time that might be fun um have you guys read kill creek by Th scott thomas i have it i started reading it and it scared me so i stopped <laughs> is that too is it too scary <laughs> no i think if i i i just need to pick the right moment to be in the mindset for it okay it you just scary. said it so like that it scared me so I <laughs> it did scare me. well i planned to take it i was like i don't want to be alone in the house while i'm reading it but that was before i had the cat so i think that mm -hmm. i feel less okay jumpy or it make you more jumpy because like suddenly like you think you're quiet and alone in the dark and then like the cat rustles something and it doesn't well, occur to you no. at first that it's the cat doing it. And you're like, who's in my house? <laughs> Before the cats, whenever I heard a noise, it would freak me out. But now I'm less jumpy in general because well, now someone could break in because you'd be like, oh, it's probably the cat. Yeah, basically in general, someone could break in and I'd be like, oh, it's just the you know Hastings yeah. causing havoc. Yeah, yeah. aren't you buddy? So I don't know. We'll see. I'll think about it. But that's what I'm thinking about just because I think it would be interesting because it's like authors getting together mm -hmm. in like a how Yeah. It's I've been it's been on my TBR for a while. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Hastings is know. trying to say I hello to, to you. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to no. pick. It's we'll not going to be the highway man. I changed my mind completely on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I I've was talking a... to someone else and it's like it's not a fun bodice ripper it's one of those like angsty it's, romances it's more oh, angsty yeah okay. and i'm like 
I don't gotcha. want to waste my pick with that. <laughs> I'm low key still like hoping Tessa Dare will release the book, The Bride Bed, I and we know. can now read it. <sighs> it's hard because, like, I don't, I, yeah, I hope she does too, but it's like I know she's been having issues, issues yeah. with yeah. like memory and stuff. So I don't know. Yeah. Oh, but speaking hoping. of a long awaited romance pick, I think we're actually getting the next Immortals After Dark book from Kresla Cole in January. Allegedly. I pre ordered it, but like, I, I pre ordered it. It's coming out until I get it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I saw somebody who'd read a copy, but maybe I just misunderstood their tweet. I think, no, I, I, I think there have been art copies. I heard that somewhere. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm living in hope. Yeah. Talk about a book that Leanna would hate. Please yeah. don't pick it. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. High Man is like, it's very old school romance. Like it's kind of that angsty, mm -hmm. it's an angsty old school bodice ripper. Okay. Got written in the 2010s. I know this is not what we're here to talk about, but has anyone else read uh, Portrait of a Scotsman? No. Yes. I was oh, like, yeah, got it. No, I didn't actually read that. Did you like it, Leona? I hated it so much. But, there you go. <laughs> but I didn't, it's not the best of the series. It's not that good, but it's like. Yeah. But like the specific thing I wanted to bring up was that like it did a thing that I was like, I thought, isn't this like a universal sign that this is a bad book? That it invokes Wuthering Heights as an example of like an idealized romance. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, not a great sign. <laughs> yeah. That's like a, a book I'm not never gonna do for drunk classes because like I hate it. Like if I know like I hate it so much, I will be an alcoholic by the end of drunk classics. Like <laughs> I can't It's not, not a it. romance in any book that's like, well, no. like Heathcliff and Kathy are like, no, not like Heathcliff and Kathy. Stop it. Yeah. Or like <laughs> the Great Gatsby. That's not a romance either. But Anna yeah. Karenina, not a romance. And like I won't read any of them. No. <laughs> Sorry. Some people have like mentioned Anna Karenina. I was like, no, I will burn it with fire. <laughs> I, I hate it. I hate it so much. I tried to read it and didn't enjoy it. Wait, which one are we talking about now? And this is true. Weathering, Weathering Heights is not a romance. This is true. No, it is not. It is a... I really like it a lot, but it's... Yeah, it's, it's yeah, not yeah, I romance. like it. I really like yeah, Weathering when... Heights, but not because I'm like, oh, Heathcliff. Yeah. Like, and yeah. the Scotsman, like, frequent, like, makes several mentions of it as, like, a... Is yeah, they quote, great? they quote and it a lot. Like, it's like... Yeah. red flag red flag like honestly <laughs> i just read this book but like i wish i had didn't read it so i could pick i could pick it still for book club and make you all read it i don't know if you Wondering guys have read this one. Oh, oh <laughs> i know i'm oh, actually optimistic I love you that might name. like this yeah i would be <laughs> down a good for name because i really like all of the punny names of that series yeah. actually well, then I'm i can use my outlander five. scotch glass that says i'll have a scott on the rocks you know what <laughs> It's I'm giving it five stars. It's actually a hero. Okay, so there's like a someone's trying to kill her, right? Oh, and I love just that. Like, yeah, this is he's I like, no, that. I'm leaving guys with you to protect you. And so she's not doing the same thing all heroines always do. Like, no, I don't want anybody to protect me. She's like, yep, nope, that's a good idea. Send him over. Like, yes. <laughs> she immediately accepts the help. She's like, yeah, someone's yes. trying to kill me. I will take as many Scottish dudes as you have. Like, yeah. she's really smart. She's an actress. She is, um, she's just like, hey, if I think you're hot, like, we can do it. Like, I'm not, like, saving my vagina for something special. Like, let's go. Like, she's really, really cool. <laughs> I like my her vagina so for a much. special occasion. This yeah, uh, comment like, that someone says funny. I can't do Scottish romances anymore, all that aying and neighing and kenning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I, like, I, I, that I don't, it's I don't so mind It's so campy it. and fun. I just yeah. love it. Uh, would like, Leanna like a Ruby it. Dixon book? No, she wouldn't. No, no, no. no. No, that's why no, I that's have not. That's like if we one. all hate Leanna. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I considered having us read one of Ruby Dixon's epic fantasies, or like, because it's it's a very interesting tone. It sits between a romantic comedy and an epic fantasy. Like I've never read something quite like it genre wise. So I thought about having <laughs> us read that, but then I was like, why would I do that to Leanna? That's not nice. So I I just decided not to. Thank you. Yeah. Plus, I really enjoy them, and I wouldn't want to hear her shitting on it. So why would I set myself up for that? I don't want to hear my shitting on it. Yeah, there exactly. You, you don't want yeah. to shit on it. I don't want you to shit on it. So like, let's we can just agree. Not the shitting will occur. Yeah. I don't. I mean, no, I think you she know, would not enjoy it. 
That's Unless you mean. want to see her just do a vlog disliking her, go join her Patreon and maybe you can make her do that. Yeah. Okay, no. I'm banning any patron that votes for that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like that would be cruel and unusual if yeah. Yeah. that, because we know 100% that would be cruel and unusual torture. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she could do a novella. They, she's, she's got really novellas. Right, the, the blue I still alien. Think it would be like, well, yes. you know. yeah, yeah, she did. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I, I have that lie. too. I know they're so pretty. I I'm not gonna lie; like, I don't think I would like it. But like, everybody talking about it so much, like, I can't help. I do feel I, like curiosity. About I it. Honestly, you would like, like that better than some of her other books because it's yeah. purposely very campy. So, like, yeah. I don't think you would like it, but I think you wouldn't be mad at it. I do think it would make for a really entertaining vlog if you ever did. I do read think it. it would be very entertaining. <laughs> no, I think Leanna, you would hate I Planted Barbarians. I so say, like, I don't think I would. I don't would think it. It. I'm looking at like hmm, I might like that. I just like people talk about it so much. It sounds yeah. so bizarre that I can't. Well, you know, help it is like really short. Curious. You can read it if all I, in a day. It's really yeah. short. If I was gonna make you read a Ruby Dixon, I would pick one of her novellas, just so you could get like a flavor of what it is she does, and you would understand like, here's yeah. what this is. Here's why I don't like this. <laughs> now I'm moving on with my life. <sighs> yeah. so, no, I mean I don't yeah. have any intention of picking it up. I'm just expressing that curiosity has been sparked but not enough to yeah. put myself through that yeah. yeah no she would not like that either because it because it's it's more world building but it's not enough that would make her happy like it just enraged me <laughs> yeah it would just be enough to make her mad it'd be kind of like marvelous light <laughs> yeah that sounds accurate oh man yeah. I did send her an innkeeper's book from Alona Andrews once because I think if she was going to like an Alona Andrews, that would be the one she would like. I don't know I'll... if you would or not, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. I, I liked it. I for it me, awesome. and she didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I could. I didn't. Yeah, I. I would have yeah. guessed she would not like that. I was hoping for the best. <laughs> I, I mean, I love. I it. will reread Grace Draven over and over. Where's Radiance? <laughs> <laughs> also, yes, she is. That that is her. Ruby Dixon. Well, to oh. be fair, they're not spiked. It's just like a. A it's spur. a protrusion. It's, a... Yeah, it's, a, it's like a thumb sitting on top of the peen that is strategically, uh, you know, placed for enhanced maximum human enjoyment. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Does it serve any other biological fun function that makes sense for evolution? No. Well, no. no. Further in the series, we found oh, out. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. On the on the uh, um, so Kui <laughs> females, uh, it it um, essentially it helps like there's like some sort of like scent thing in it, and it helps like mark that as. Oh, that I was gonna say. Okay. I mean, even if it didn't, so have people that. go around sniffing vaginas and just be like, "Oh, but do I mean, you have, have a boyfriend?" It, yes. <laughs> well, no, they're very good to sense. They definitely can smell things on other people. So, yes. even if this later book didn't explain that, it wouldn't have to because oh, evolutionarily, no. like if you had a thing that made you more desirable as a partner, then you would have spread more seed, and so then the having of that thing, like which is a mutation, would possibly spread throughout the entire species because you would be chosen as a mate more frequently. Oh, because yeah, you please more. Yeah. Well, but the right. Sakui females do not have a clitoris. This is part of their their discretion. Yeah, I know. But this is part of their <laughs> discovery when they're um, first meeting the humans is like, what is they call it the third nipple? Because they don't know what it is at first. Um, but then they discover. But the Sakui females have like more of like a G-spot situation. So like off the ice planet in the normal rest of the universe, the males often will um, pierce their peen to enhance their females enjoyment interesting uh are you I writing, could write are you writing the wiki you could i, not, I feel like I, could. I feel like you would be the person to do I, it you know i now only have one ruby dixon book left that i have not read and it's the newest <laughs> oh, one so i can confirm that none of that will be occurring in guns of the dawn <laughs> Try all right play. then all right then <laughs> yes you did welcome yeah. Hastings also would like to say Merry Christmas. Aww. There go your books. <laughs> oh, man. Ice Planet Evolutionary Biology. Yes. Uh, yeah, with Mara. With I Mara. Can, I'll, like, I'll pull down like the little uh, old school like, <laughs> from behind. Give the, hand off the syllabus. Yeah, <laughs> Here's your reading for the week. Pointer. Instead <laughs> of Grey's Anatomy, can it be Blue's Anatomy? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Blue's Anatomy 101 with Mara. 
<laughs> Chapter one. <laughs> that would be really funny, actually. <laughs> I also can explain the uh, the biology of the other alien species in the greater Dixon verse, which includes a cat-like species with a barbed peen. For the furries. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this feels like a weird note to end this on. No, I am looking forward to this next month. I think, Leanna, I'm guessing this was a good... I'm, I'm feeling very optimistic. About I well, at so least I'll that. be happy for yeah. once. <laughs> That's true. Uh, <laughs> uh, the 29th is the last weekend of, of January. That sounds correct. Okay, so oh. good. We have a good... Yeah. We have yeah. enough time to get through it. Yeah. Um, and I stated look, multiple times. There's the so, many, so many books so many books so little read. time uh i'm around hi yeah <laughs> i'm doing stuff yeah I, each of us yeah reading. it lets if anybody's got stuff they want to talk about that they've got going on um so i feel like we're all doing a lot of different things what have i got going on um, i've been doing wine chats on oh, every yeah. other sunday oh, yeah so yeah. I drink wine. I talk about books. It's a fun live show. Come for the wine. Stay for the vibes. I have fun with it. Hi, it's Kim. Awesome. Uh, Sorry, comment. Hi, Kim. How are you? Um, yeah. So I I, I I got my sommelier certification. So I talk about wine and, and books. And yeah. I'm looking for guests. So if you guys have any YouTubers or booktubers you think I should reach out to, let me know. But they'll be yeah. fun. Yeah. Awesome uh yeah i'm i've got well liana and i are doing um the sort of truth series read along for the whole year so we'll be alternating live shows um so wizards first rule we're doing in january that'll be on my channel um sorry my phone was being liana i feel like you're in like a million different read-alongs with different people <laughs> Um, well, mostly with you. <laughs> I mean, we're doing sort of truth on the channels and first law on the podcast. And then I'm still doing the Song of Ice and Fire read along. The rotation is back to me in January. So doing that. Um, oh, I'm participating in the Winter Night Trilogy um, read along. Um, that's on Evie's channel. And uh, um, Heather and I this are doing a Rings Orange Trilogy read along. So we're going to chat about that in February. Um, Yay. That is we're chatting about pressure. American Gods at the end of January and about Norwegian Wood by Murakami in February oh on me goodness. and Hillary's channels. Um. <laughs> I'm like trying to get out of structure. I'm trying to purposefully like I made an announcement saying I'm trying not to have so many commitments. And then I was like, here's all my commitments. How is that working? <laughs> the only, yeah, this book club is really the only thing I've committed to for next year, which I feel good about. Um, I'm doing more commentary type videos, so I have more room to like Those read, cool. read around that. Um, preview of coming attractions. I think my January one is going to be about the aesthetics of wellness. So I've been reading for that, but yeah, I don't know. Cool. I'm just, have you considered? Oh yeah, we're going to, we just <coughs> talked about that today. Um, to yeah, I think we're going to, That I guess that's the other thing that I have, I have. Yeah, the only two things I have planned are this book club those four books for next year and then me and leanna are reading um every other month we're doing a hob nice but in uh february or after february um we'd like to chat about live ship versus farce year yes that's right cool we will do that um i'm maybe gonna do a live ship thing starting in march because I want to read those this year. So we'll see. They're really good. I like them better than Farseer so far. The Mad Ship is the best one I've read from her. I just finished that yesterday. That was my Christmas read. Yeah, I saw on uh, Instagram. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Looks good. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to keep my commitments minimal. <laughs> <laughs> There's just always an ongoing first law thing going on. So just like <laughs> dive okay. in when you're ready. And also, Who's so doing busy? Elderling along? Wow, I don't know. I don't know. But I did the math. I think if we keep going every other month, we may finish The Realm of the Elderlings by the end of 2023. 
<laughs> so these will have been reading it for like four years. There's I a mean, lot of how books long did it take her to write them? That's true. There's just a lot of them, and they're very chonky books. Yeah. But I do like that it's broken up into series. You know, instead of like Wheel of Time, which that. is like one and you don't get any payoff until like hey. the end, as opposed to like, you know, micro arcs within. Hey. That's awesome. Yay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, okay, I'm doing my reread right now of Blade itself, and I like it a lot better on a reread. Like, I liked it the first time, but like, it is much more interesting when you already know the characters and know what's happening, like for I was, a reread. I was telling Mara today when she's wanting happy endings for live ship. And I'm like, first law, a little bit kind of sort of maybe kind of delivers on a happy ending a little bit. So. <laughs> I mean, I I'm kind of, yeah, I like, yeah, yeah. I think I don't have more than I think Hawk is going read. to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't have the capacity to read as many chonky fantasies as you do, Liana. Like, I can really only do, like, one-ish a month. <laughs> so. Oh, my cup cool. overfloweth with Hob. I mean, Hob also, like, there's there's chonky, I mean, chonky fantasy in terms of length, but Hob's fantasies are chunky, not just in terms of length, but in terms of substance. Like, yeah. it's not just, like, an adventure. Like, yeah, it's a lot. there's a lot. Yeah. It's an emotional... It's like trial a journey. Yes. <laughs> this is well, true. I feel cool. like we had a, a good a good run, guys. Yeah. For the year. I'm very excited slash anxious for you guys to like love slash hate Guns of the Dawn. <laughs> I'm, I'm going into it with a lot of optimism. Yeah, I'm hoping it'll be fun. I feel so. again, I feel like it's extremely unlikely that anyone will outright hate it. Yeah. But you never know. I mean it's possible, <laughs> but I would be surprised. I mean, like I feel like I could see you guys being lukewarm on it and being like it wasn't that good but like i would be very surprised if you guys were like this was the worst it's going on my challenge worst of the year <laughs> challenge accepted <laughs> yeah it's yeah i mean i hope i'm hoping it'll be fun we'll see but uh yeah oh my god what People oh my god! Crying well, during I the mean, live shows. Wow. Okay. That checks look. out. I cry. I mean, during... though, I don't think I would cry talking about it. Like maybe. I mean, I actually haven't cried reading it either. But like, if I was gonna cry, it would be while I'm I reading, cried reading it. it. <laughs> but I cry reading a lot of things. Wait, I live ship at the or end of here? Razor Bl- Both. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to think where in live ship you would have cried. Um, there's multiple times in Farts here where I was like, "This is." Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> this time I cried. I cried for Cirilla. Um, yeah, I cry over everything. I cried at the end of the razor blade tears. Um, it's like all the animal trauma in Farseer is like oh that. God, that's yeah. a gut punch. I cry. <laughs> yeah, I I'm a sap. It doesn't take much for me to cry in a book. I'm like yeah, I don't Bethany, who's dead inside. <laughs> I cried in a book this month. I, I know. I saw you post about that. I was like, oh, whoa. I know. Well, I think part of it is because it hit close to like real life stuff. And it just, you know, it's like sometimes a book just like, it's like therapy. I feel like I'm more likely to cry at like an ad for detergent than a book because like it's like the music and stuff and like that other parts of it. Whereas like a book, like, it's sad, but you know, like it's not it, like music will get me to cry, like the drop of a hat, like the right kind of sappy music. I'm just like, I this is a manipulative. I know what you're doing, and I'm still crying. <laughs> yeah. I I cry for all of it. It's it, yeah. I cry get I get a lot of my emotions out through media of all kinds. So. And anything Peter Pan related, I will instantly start weeping. Anything well, race played tears. I cried because it was like complicated father son relationships, and that is a mm. surefire way to just make me weep. So, yeah, this just became group therapy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I'm about to fall asleep, so I'm probably yeah. We should go. go. Um, <laughs> also, not, I would not say I'm sick. Well, that was because you didn't get your Starbucks today. <laughs> that too. But. I don't know the. It depends on the book for me on this question. I was gonna say if it's like that, I like it, and it's like a you know a page turner. Page turner, we're like, I then yes, what happens next. yeah, yeah. But if you like it, but it's just like faster. beautiful writing, I might read it slower. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't read yeah. it faster. I'll just read it for longer. Yeah. Yeah. You get sitting. through it faster because you're spending yeah. more time on it. That's true. So that's but like my brain, I'm already reading it the fastest I can read. So okay. I but if it's like a thriller or mystery entire. where like we're getting to the part where we're like finding it out, then I'm like, yeah, barely skimming. It yeah. I must know. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I do read faster in those cases too. I think I also just get less distracted because like you're more like super focused on, on what it is. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right guys well thank you for joining us and uh we'll be over on lana's channel next month um for guns of the dawn yay happy holidays bye happy holidays happy new year